Psalms 119, verses 161 to 168. Shin. Perfection. Princes had persecuted me without a cause. Well, they persecuted Jesus without a cause. But that's not the subject of this verse, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. And again, this verse is, well, how should I say it? It's not an excuse to quit. Even if you are being persecuted without a cause, there's no reason for it. Remain in the word. Keep going in the Lord. Don't you think after all the troubles that Paul had that in 2 Timothy he can write, I've kept the faith and you know my time of my departure is at hand, I've kept the faith. He kept going. There are people who, well, Paul lost his head. There are people who were burning at the faggots. Without a cause, except for, you know, the word of God, serving God, serving Jesus. And there were some that sung hymns or even quoted scripture as they were dying. Standing in awe of the word means you're reading it and it just brings excitement to you. It brings new things. It brings what God has, what entire chapter we're doing, we're coming to an end. One more night of Psalms 119. And all the things that the, that the word does, all the things that the word is, everything that the living book is should stand in awe. Every day should be something new in reading the word. The all should be that the word convicts you of sin in your life. Not other people's sin, but your sin. All would be not that you're being persecuted, but that the word. Don't worry about the persecution. Get in the word and stay there. I rejoice at thy word. As one that finds great spoil. You know, all newspaper reports, you know, these divers have gone down deep in this ocean or sea and they have found treasures or this old sailing ship and with the great stuff they found on it, they'll bring up, the, the, you know, the cannons aboard it. So what? Woman goes up in the attic after buying a house and she's cleaning through there and she finds all these old coins or all this old stuff. So what? Guy puts his, his card in the ATM machine, takes out $50 and gets 50000 So what? I rejoice at the word, not of the riches. Can you say that? Does your paycheck at the end of the week excite you more than what you're reading the Bible through the whole week? I hate and abhor extreme hatred, lying. Isn't that funny? And here's a guy who, who's under God and he writes something that he hates. You would think by the modern person today, the liberal, that you know, God is not a God of hate. Wait till we continue on in, in our word in, in chapter studies in the Bible. In Proverbs, we're going to learn about things that God hates. We've already learned that we are to hate in Psalms evil. And the whore lying. You can classify that as religion. Religion will lie to people's souls. Never mind the person, their soul. But the law do I love. Lying is against the Bible. 
Lying is not holy. It is not Christ-like. On one side of the scale, you got the Word of God. On the other, deepest marrow of, of filth and, and scum is lies. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy through thy Sanctify through thy truth, thy word is true. So if the word is true, then lying is not God. Read John 8.44 about lying and who the father of lies is. It's Satan. So when you lie, you leave God and take Satan's behalf. You have become an ambassador of Satan. And when you are a liar, you're the hate and abhor the lies. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. That's just a minimum. Righteous judgments. There are judgments going in your life. People say judge not least you judge. There are judgments going through your life every single day. You know, for whatever stupid reason that uh, things have happened to you that you leave the house late. And you may get to the place you're going to late. That is a judgment of God that... Whatever reason you don't know, maybe he wanted you not to be in a place at, at the specific time that you would have been there. You know, when when you, you're doing something and a tool you're going to use, and you're about to use a tool, and suddenly look at, oh, wait a minute. This is broken. Something's wrong with it. And a judgment of God for you to, to expect it before using it, before causing injury. And then there are those wicked, evil judgments that, you know, floods and tidaways and uh, sinkholes and sickness and disease and death. And you got to praise God. Or you're going to be a helpless, fanatical, sicko. you got to realize God is holy and just, and what happens, happens, and he controls it. Even if Satan's doing it, he's got to get permission from God. Read what happened with Job at the end of each of the judgments that were come, came upon him by Satan, authorized by God. And all these, Job did not sin with his lips. That means, you know what he did? He praised God. Great peace. Not just peace. Have they which love thy law. And I, I have been in troubles and tribulations in my life. And everything crumbling down. Listen, not only was I in a valley, but I'm in a valley with a shovel digging deeper into the valley. And I've had such peace with God. And you cannot know that peace unless you have God. Because if you don't have God, if you've got a drug or an alcohol or tobacco or pills or whatever. And that's only temporal. I've got a God that said, I will never leave thee or forsake thee. And if you are in the word and you love the word and you're trying to do right, even though you still are a sinner, but you're confessing your sins and you go into trials and tribulations, God will be there with you. And he'll hold your hand in his hand and 
there's a reason why I want you to go through this. I want you to learn something, or maybe there's a sin in your life, or you got to see what this means. And you'll have peace. And great peace. Great peace have they which love thy law. And nothing shall offend them. Job did not get offended. When he lost his cows, his camels, his land, his, his servants. Just one after another. And that got one guy come running to the field and coming to tell Job, he didn't get offensive. He didn't get offended. He got down his knees and praised God and thanked God. He didn't get offended when a guy came and told him, say, listen, your, your, your children are dead. A great whirlwind. He didn't even get offended at his wife. We can uh, curse uh, integrity, curse God, and die. You're a foolish woman. I can, I can see Job rolling those off his lips just as quick as she finished her sentence. A thing here is when when you you don't sin, you don't go and charge God foolishly if you got God working with you with great peace. You may be, now I have heard people say, you don't ask God why. Now listen, I have gone through troubles in my life. And I, now listen, I don't question God on, on his authority to do it, but Lord, the why would be, why God would be, what am I to learn from this? What do you, or how are you going to mold me from what I am in right now? So I don't get offended. So I don't sin. That Lord, you and I, during this situation, can continue in the peace and I can learn. When the disciples are on the ship of Jesus and there's the storms and all that trouble, what, why? Call upon the Savior. And trust in him. That was the lesson. He already told them at one point. When we get to the other side. He promised them they were going to get to the other side. Unless God, Jesus is a liar. And he's not. And then the storm comes up. And they're, they're bailing out. They're, they got all the buckets and all that. And all they had to do was call on the Lord. For the great peace. But they didn't sin. They didn't get offended. They marveled at the peace that the Lord had given them. And I just keep on thinking, I heard one guy, you know, that verse there, you know, you'll never offend me. Well, when that guy runs to the red light right in front of you, uh, don't think how you're going to have nice, good, clean thoughts. That doesn't mean, you know, you're not going to get offended, okay? It, it, other writers put, it's a stumbling, put a stumbling block before you. If I'm walking with the Lord, and if I love the law, if I love the word of God, if I'm doing right in my life, What troubles am I going to have? The only troubles I get into is when I step in myself and take God off the throne. So you got to look at it like this. Every person has their own path. No one shares a path. I don't care if you're a husband and wife. I know you're one in the eyes of God, but a husband has his path and a wife has her path. The husband is to work. An average husband, a born-again Christian family, the husband is to go to work and do his job. That's his path. 
Her job is to clean the house, make the meals. You don't join those paths together then. There's a path for each person. There's a path for the children to obey their parents. The father's not going to walk the parents of the children's path. They're to go to school and learn things. And if you're going down your path with great peace, there are going to be things that are going to be thrown out there by the enemy. And as we've been talking about the light of the word, we talk about the light of your path, the light, of your, the, the lamp of your shoes, and all that. You'll see that 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 thing come up. And be like, hey, you like going down the road in the middle of the night, and you see those little orange uh, flickering lights. There, there, there's a construction up ahead. There, there's something going on up ahead. You guys slow down. And that's what that is. Lord, I have hope for thy salvation. Now run that to Titus 2.13. That hope is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now for the Jew, the hope of the salvation is the Messiah coming to give them their land and get, when Jesus came, the Roman government out. Do you realize the Jews were told to do what the Messiah, what they want the Messiah to do? The Jews were to go in that land and remove all the Hevites, the Canaanites, and, you know, all the ites. Get the ites out. That was their job. Listen, they were under Babylonian uh, authority and kingship because they went against God. They were under Roman rule because they were against God. And they wanted the, the Messiah to come in and, and give this instant freedom and peace and all that. But the great peace that they were looking for, they didn't love the law. You know, you're supposed to wash your hands. Ooh, you know, but what about what about honoring the mother and father? What about there is the, the, the scriptural proof of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and, and the prophecy spoken about him, and they knew and they still rejected it. They didn't love the law. Had they loved the law, yes, they would have received their Messiah, and then guess what? The seven years come somehow a tribulation, the thousand-year millennial reign, the peace, and then we would be in eternity by now with great peace. And what would, be, what would be the offensive to the Jews right now? They're in a war today, right now, with, with the Hamas. You know what the offensive to them is? Is Hamas launching missiles right back at them. Jewish soldiers getting shot in the battlefield right now. That would be offense. But Lord, I have hope in thy salvation. Our hope is the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. For the Jew, it's that saving of the nation to give them that land, which they're going to get the new earth. And But for the Jew, and done thy commandments. What were they doing that God commanded them when Jesus showed up on the scene? Man, they, they were making a profit off the sheep and the doves and all that, that Jesus had to knock the tables down. Didn't the law say you weren't supposed to oppress and you weren't supposed to do surety? You weren't supposed to charge them usury? Well, they were. Didn't Jesus say one time that your traditions go over the commandments of God? There was one time they brought a woman and committed adultery. The law said the man and the woman. So they violated the law. This psalm is this part of this psalm here is speaking about the future Jesus Christ. We'll go through it again. I've done thy commandments. They weren't doing that when Jesus came, and they're not doing it today. I'm told by a Jewish man today at the Passover they'll take a a bone of a lamb and put it down in an empty seat. At the table, and that's supposed to represent the Messiah. Well, the Messiah, the Bible says, not a bone of him shall be broken. Well, what are you doing? 
by placing that bone on that plate, you have violated the scripture. And then you're supposed to go to Jerusalem. So. My soul has kept thy testimony. Not the flesh. That eternal being about you. Listen, there are times I'm sitting in church and I'd be like, my body's like, let's get out of here. Blah, 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 blah. blah. And my soul's like, hey, listen, we need to be here. We need to hear this message. This part of the message may not be about us, but something may be coming up and be about us. Now, body, shut up. I know you don't want to be here. Tough. There's a lot of things you do that I don't like. But that eternal part of you ought to be the one, hey, I want to do right. And that flesh will speak, hey, I want to do wrong. And there's that battle between right and wrong. And I love them exceedingly. Do you love them more than anything else? You are to love the word more than your parents. You are to love the Lord more than your spouse. You are to love the word more than your children. You are to love the Lord more than your job. That's Ephesians 5. Husband, wife, children, job. Check it out. Who's above the husband? Jesus Christ. Who does John 1 1 say the word is? It's Jesus Christ. You ought to have your own intimate moment every day with the word. Every day. And it may not be three chapters. You know, if you read one chapter of the Bible and the Lord has spoken to your heart and gratified your heart and given you peace in your heart, it's better than none. What do you love more? What can Satan tempt you that, oh, okay, I, I put the Bible away and I'll go do that. And you'll be amazed what Satan knows your secrets, even if you may not know them. I would assume for a mother, maybe a mother of a newborn, imagine she's going to sit down with her word and all of a sudden that baby starts crying. Well, let the baby cry for three chapters. He ain't going to die. It's either wet, hungry, or... All right, get up and check on it. You say, okay, it's it's safe, it's alive, it's well. Maybe pick the baby up and come read. Maybe read it out loud to your baby. You read the word and you know you're a businessman. Man, good man. And the phone rings about a business deal. Oh, wait a minute. I, I will call back. It's, it's time to read my Bible. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimony, for all my ways are before thee. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. You know, princes have persecuted me without cause. Jesus Christ was persecuted without cause because he did right. But my heart standeth in awe of thy word. Jesus was the word and is the word. And the day that he calls us home, or the, whether death or rapture, you're going to be in awe when you see Jesus finally.
You're going to spiritually pee yourself when you finally see Jesus. You're going to be so happy. If you really love the word. You imagine a born again Christian dying, let's say dying. And there's Jesus and he's angry. Why would he be happy to see Jesus? He had other things in his life that were more important. But if you love the Lord want to do right, and there he is right there in front of man, you talk about awe. I rejoice at thy word. You're going to be rejoicing at Jesus. <laughs> You're going to be jumping up and down and shouting hallelujah. I think of a Tony Scrano who was in a wheelchair and told me the first time, you know, I'm going to be running around in heaven. Like I'm looking at him like, okay, whatever. I didn't know about the new body. I didn't know about the new legs. I didn't know anything about that. I thought the guy was a fruitcake. But I could just see him now knowing the Bible. There he is when he died, jumping up and down in front of Jesus. Jesus, this is the first time I've been able to walk in a long time. Let me grab your hand. Let's go for a walk with you. A closer walk with thee. I rejoice at that word as one that findeth great spoil. What greater spoil can you get than New Jerusalem? That's got all the riches a man has ever desired and wanted. And I'm going to get it all in one big purse. What you value high, the gold, I'm going to walk on it. In New Jerusalem. You want them pearls or a woman's best? No, that's a diamond. Well, diamonds are going to be in there too. But those pearls, you know, going around a woman's neck, they're going to be the doors in heaven. Woke up to one of those things, man, I, Jesus, what, what kind of clam spit that thing out? Oh, you, 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 I, no clam spit. I'm not, I just said, let there be pearls, 12 of them. Oh, okay, Lord. I hate and a whore lying. That's, there, there's no more liar, according to Revelation, in, in heaven, in glory. Even the point in time that Revelation 12, the liar will be kicked out of heaven. And I'll be there to shout, Amen, glory, hallelujah. But thy law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise thee. Because of thy righteous judgment. You know, the Bible spoke that Jesus went off by himself and prayed to the Father. Great peace have they which love thy law. The Lord Jesus Christ loved the law. Imagine all the turmoil. Imagine all the, here he is healing people that would turn out and sit one day and say, Crucify him! And he had peace. He never got angry. I know in the temple he got angry. I'm trying to say he didn't get angry with people without a cause. Even with the Pharisees, I mean, he spoke, he, he, he was rough. Still, he kept his cool. And when he did rebuke him, when he did scold him out, he kept his cool. Because of thy righteous judgments, and the judge that will be of all judge, and the judgment seat of Christ, and the great white throne judgment, Jesus Christ. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Nothing got in Jesus' way, not even Satan. When Satan came to, to try Jesus, Jesus took the word and went right back at him with the word. He didn't, the Pilate didn't stop him. The Sadducees, the, the Pharisees, and the scribes didn't stop him. There were times they wanted to stone him right there. That, that didn't stop him. Nothing stopped him going to the cross. And then nothing stopped him from coming out of that tomb alive. You imagine Jesus Christ walking through hell with peace. You know what that place sounded like when he opened up the door, the gates? Imagine what it felt like. You trying to tell me he didn't suffer in hell? He had to. 
Isaiah 53, he took all the infirmities of what I was supposed to get. That means he burned and suffered in hell. Said, I thirst. Lord, I have hope for thy salvation. That is him, the Lord Jesus Christ. And done thy commandments. I can't say that, but Christ did. Christ fulfilled the law 100%. My soul has kept thy testimony, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I loved him exceedingly. He loved the Father as the Father loved him. I have kept thy precepts. Jesus kept them. And thy testimonies. He kept them. For all my ways are before thee. The Lord God was always before his Son. Imagine the father waiting for the son to come home like the prodigal son story. That day when, when God closed his eyes and Christ cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The father turned off the lights in heaven, turned around. But still, I know my son's coming. Imagine the great joy that the party came and the, and the feasting of all the angels and the seraphims and the elders and all that in glory as when Jesus Christ came up and said, Victorious. Hey, Dad, look, I got the keys. Perfection is Jesus Christ. We don't get perfect until we die or are raptured. You want to see a perfect man? Go out to the graveyard with a shovel and start undigging. That's the perfect man. He'll never lie to you. He'll never cheat you. He'll never swander you. He won't do you wrong. He'll never sin. You find a, a man that has died as an alcoholic, and you put a Budweiser in his hand in the graveyard, and he'll never drink it. For 400 years, you can have that beer in his hand and uncap it, unscrew it, whatever, and you can come back 400 years later, and he did not drink the beer. But Jesus Christ, 100% fulfilled God's will for him, 100% fulfilled the law, and 100% is victorious. Something we are not. Jesus died for you, and the word says his return. 